Hello and welcome to our Joburg office where I've just had a delicious coffee from my man Sundile. But I want to show you something. I need two hands for this. Ah, there we go. This is our very own electric vehicle charger. We had it installed towards the end of last year and we did that because Jaguar wanted to give us an iPace for a month to see what it's like to live with an electric car. So let me take you through a couple of the basics here. If you'd like to install one of those in your office, that's the 7.4 kilowatt hour unit. They cost about 23,000 Rand. It was about 7,000 Rand for the install. That price can vary. And that means that we are now EV ready. So we had to do that to get the iPace, but it was one of the coolest things we've ever done. And one of our CEOs, Alistair, has been living with the iPace for the month. But I've stolen it from him for a few days because I'm up here for the 2020 Cars Awards. So here we go. Here is a day or two in the life of me and an electric car. The Jaguar I-Pace is a car of extremes. It is extremely fast. It is extremely luxurious, extremely good looking and extremely expensive. But it's also extremely good to drive. Let's go. Let me take you through the startup procedure. Foot on the brake, press the start button, and the car is on after this cool, like futuristic sound. And we're off. Reverse button, all your drive buttons are over here. And quite interestingly, the car emits a noise from the outside, like a beeping noise, because the car is so quiet that it's actually a danger to pedestrians. And that I think has actually just been made law. So you know like when you're at the back of a pick and pay and there's trucks reversing everywhere and they're all beeping. It's like that, but classier. Way more expensive. If you haven't driven an electric vehicle before, something that takes quite a lot of getting used to is the effect of regeneration. So when you come off the accelerator, it has two effects. And that is one, it decelerates the car, and two, it charges the battery, which is super, super cool. So for instance, if you're rolling downhill, you're not using the accelerator, you're actually charging the battery. And in the I-Pace, that regeneration effect is really, really strong. And what it means in practice is that you actually drive this car on one pedal. You hardly ever use the brakes. And I've read that on some Teslas, people go six, seven, eight years without changing their front brake pads because you just hardly ever use them. And interestingly, the car, when you come right off the accelerator, turns the brake lights on because the car is slowing down so much that someone would just rear end you, which is not good. And what that results in is a very relaxing driving experience. So not only is it very quiet in here, it's not stressful in any way to drive this car. So I have cleverly engineered this video so that I can do things like go for coffee and tell you about the car at the same time. That's, that's my thought pattern. <laughs> So I've just got back from a quick drive and I'd like to take you through the plug-in process of an electric vehicle. You unlock the car and then open this flap over there. You then move over to your charging point and you grab hold of the plug. In it goes. Now a good idea is to lock the car. You don't have to, but what that does is if you're in a public place, it actually locks that thing in place so it can't be removed and tampered with. And then you get on with your day, I suppose. Um, we, do have a, we do have a front door, you know, for people who want to walk into the office, but it's all the way over there. So do electric cars really save you money when it comes to reducing your fuel cost? The answer quite categorically is yes, but it does depend on say what vehicle you're coming from. If you're coming from a five liter V8 supercharged Range Rover, then wow, you're going to save a lot of money. It's actually about a sixth of the fuel cost. So how you work it out is you multiply the price of a unit of electricity at your house or at work, which is roughly two Rand depending on where you live 
in the country multiplied by the size of the battery which in the ipace case is about 91 kilowatt hours so that's about 180 bucks and you do about 400 k's on that 350 to 400 k's now i'm not going to do the rest of the maths but I think to fill up a Range Rover these days costs a lot more than 180 Rand. And if you drive it like a bell end, then you're probably also going to do about 300, 350, 400 Ks on a tank. So that gives you an idea of how much cheaper it is to run an electric car. But here's what's really exciting about electric cars. The way you can charge your car gets cheaper and cleaner all the time. So if you have a petrol or a diesel powered car you can't really make your own fuel can you i mean you, you can make diesel out of old cooking oil but i mean that's quite a mission you can't make your own petrol you just can't whereas if you invest in your home you take your home off the grid and then you charge your electric car at home you're charging it off the sun you can't do that with a petrol car that's not an option ever it's never going to be and that's one of the reasons why I think investing in an electric car is a good idea. Just imagine never having petrol costs ever again. It's brilliant. Let me give you a tour of the actual iPace, and to do so, I'm going to get out. So Jag says this car is an SUV, but I mean, it, it, I don't know. It, it's not. It's very low. You know, it does have air suspension, this model. So you can raise it to look a bit more like an SUV. You do get that high driving position that I think you want from an SUV. But I will give them credit. This car looks like nothing else on the road. It does get a lot of attention, but it does have some flaws. One of them is in the boot area. So that's my hoodie and that's the spare wheel, which as you can see is taking up quite a lot of room in here. I mean, you know that's that's not um not very practical and obviously because they've given you a spare wheel that means the car doesn't have run flats and i don't know why they wouldn't have just run it on run flats i mean i'm sure there's a technical reason maybe the car is too heavy because electric vehicles are extremely heavy so maybe it's got something to do with that but and obviously you can take this out you know it's just a carabiner there and you get it out and you stick it in your garage but then you got no spare wheel so that's a pretty big issue with this car so you've bought an suv but you have no boot space um i love these door handles they pop out obviously when you open and lock the car those are super cool obviously they just stole that from tesla but it's fine we you know we won't talk about that moving to the front of the car obviously that's where you plug it in and then the front boot or the fruit as i like to call it is over here because obviously there's no motor there's no petrol engine so you just get this little space for the contingency charger and maybe i don't know if you've bought a few sandwiches from woolies you could warm them up in here it gets a little bit hot so this is the emergency charger you really shouldn't use this often in fact you shouldn't use it at all it's for real real emergencies it only charges it takes 48 hours to charge the battery so i mean it's completely useless and it's actually quite dangerous it draws so much current it draws more than a boiling kettle so imagine leaving a kettle boiling for 48 hours that's how dangerous this is and when we plugged our bmw i3 because it has the same charger into our office in cape town it actually melted one of our extension cords so yeah don't burn your house down don't use that charger there we go that is a little tour of the ipace for you i really do like the look of this thing i really do it's nice nice car right this is probably the perfect time to talk about load shedding and electric vehicles because I'm driving through an area that is currently being load shedded. And in this climate, it's very easy to be skeptical and cynical about electric vehicles. And I totally understand that. I totally understand that when there's no energy security, you're thinking to yourself, why on earth should I buy an electric car? Okay, so 
here we go it's not that bad if you have a home charger you can charge your iPace, which has one of the biggest batteries on the market, twice the size of a BMW i3 battery. You can charge your battery in about six to eight hours. Now, if you get home at say six in the evening and you leave at say eight the next morning, that's 14 hours at home. So if load shedding is for four hours, even overnight, still gives you 10 hours to charge your car. And maybe one day in this country we'll have off-peak tariffs and you'll want to charge the car at night anyway. Of course, if there's charging stations at work, that also makes your life a bit easier. You've got more options. Charging stations at shopping centers while you do your groceries. There are charging stations at Jaguar dealerships. You can use the ones at BMW dealerships. If Nissan ever installs some in their dealerships, like they said they were going to do four years ago, then you can use those as well. So there are a number of ways to dodge this load shedding issue, which we're definitely going to be dealing with as a country for the foreseeable future. And I don't think it's that much of an issue. I really don't. If you spend a bit more money, put a charger in your house, you'll be fine. You'll be totally fine. That raises another bit of an issue for me, which annoys me quite a lot, is that you spend about 2 million Rand on this car and Jaguar still makes you pay separately for the charging wall box for your house and the installation costs. I'm like, really? Just throw it in. Surely you would just throw that in. It's like selling a cell phone without a charger. It doesn't make any sense. Of course, the biggest problem with the adoption of electric cars right now in South Africa, in my opinion, is not load shedding or ESCOM. It's the price of these damn things. Wow, they are expensive. You can choose between this, which goes for about 1.9 million Rand starting price, or you can choose the i3, the BMW, which goes for about 700,000 Rand starting price. And when you consider that the average car finance deal through West Bank is 270,000 Rand, that is way, way, way out of most people's budgets in this country, way, way out. So until electric cars get down below 300,000 Rand, I don't think we're going to see widespread adoption. And that's such a pity. But remember the first cell phones, they cost an absolute fortune and they were so cuck. The battery life was like one and a half hours if you were lucky. Now cell phones are amazing. They shoot 4K and they have GPS involved and installed and batteries last like 24 hours unless it's an iPhone iPhone joke threw that in there but that that's the thing that's how technology works these things are going to get cheaper they are going to get better it's just and now that more manufacturers are involved in the industry the competition is greater so that technology advances further because everyone's trying to outdo each other well everyone's trying to beat Tesla let's be honest and that's great that's great for you and me that's great for people who want an electric car it's awesome did you know that we also sell really awesome car themed merchandise? Check out our range of custom t-shirts and prints at our online store now. Simply click on the square box on your screen and we'll take you there or the link is in the description below. Thanks for watching.